dedicated to each and every one of you who appreciate a great glass of wine. You know what I mean? It's Monday. Let's raise a glass to the beginning of another week. It's time to unscrew, uncork, or savor a bottle. And let's begin exploring the wine glass. Today, we return to the Paso Robles Downtown Vibe event. The second opportunity people had to taste the wines from downtown wineries was in a food and wine pairing. The event was a huge success. Wines from Indigene, Seashell, Cereal, Stilson, and Symbiosis were poured alongside Chef Alma's creations. After hearing the descriptions of the food and how they pair with the wines, you will be wiping the drool off your phone. While you're listening, it would be greatly appreciated if you could take one minute to subscribe, rate, and review. It takes only a few seconds of your time, but means so much to the show. The next best way to support Explorer the Wine Glass is to tell all of your friends. If you enjoy the podcast, your wine-loving friends will too. Remember to follow me on all the socials. And finally, don't forget to head to the website, exploringthewineglass.com, to read the blog, sign up for the newsletter, and keep up with all the happenings. Slancha! Hey everybody, I'm Lori Budd, a UC Davis winemaking program, Spanish wine scholar, Somme Day service, champagne and Cote de Ron specialist, and a WSET level 2 graduate. You can find Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials, as well as your favorite podcast catchers. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to swipe, subscribe, rate, and review. Stay in the know about all things wine by visiting my website, exploringthewineglass.com. I promise I'll never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. You are so special, even in the Bible. We have um, a really special guest today, uh, Chef Alma Al-Ayun. It's Al-Lasha. Um, she's from Spain. She's from that does all kinds of great events and she is outstanding. So today I think you're going to be um, wowed on the food bites that she's made for you. You're going three showings. The other two are going to be heading out. Oh, right. um, as she, after she does her introduction, she's going to go and prepare the hot ones for later. Okay. So here oh. she is. Oh, come on. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, before becoming a chef, she worked in the entertainment industry for more than 20 years as an event and TV producer. She loved her job and had some incredible mem- memories, but decided to put TV career on the back burner in order to pursue her long, long life passion for cooking. She enrolled in Cordon Bleu College in, of Culinary Arts uh, and where, in Hollywood, and after graduating with honors and turned under Master Chef Michael Simarusti, at one of LA's finest restaurants, Providence on Melrose Avenue. From there, uh, she went on to open La Mel, La Mel, La Mel, La Mel Coffee Boutique in Silver Lake. And after working there, she catered company with companies such as Wolfgang Puck, including uh, or make, before making the move to come up to our area okay, <laughs> in 2012. So when she came up, her husband and her opened a bed and breakfast. It was truly a dream come true, and she did that. It's called the Tuscan Village Villa, uh, where she was able to give hospitality one-on-one and these food services in an amazing um, smaller venue. After closing the BMB, it was somewhat bittersweet, but the next chapter was extremely exciting. That's where she's having a blast being a private chef and also working on the next project, publishing uh, a book magazine filled with recipes, anecdotes, from her b and experience, life in Paso, and everything between, stay tuned. So, welcome to Chef Ayun. Thank you. It was a long intro, but you got the whole picture. <laughs> well, I'm going to be brief because your food is uh, in front of you, ready to be eaten. Um, I do very much enjoy what I do, um, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, when it comes to food and wine, I think, you know, the two go so together, <laughs> like you can't really choose one or the other, or, you know, for me, and my husband is a wine person also, so he, we are very passionate about food, which is how we ended up here. 
So what I prepare for you today, when you have a menu on, on the side and you have the, 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 the wine pairing that goes with each bite, um, you're probably gonna end up maybe with a couple of bites from each, um, from each little plate. And you're going to start with the potato cave, which I paired with the viognier. Um, and you're gonna find that the next one is also a viognier. The reason why I kind of have fun putting them together is because they're so different. I think the first one is really, um, I was thinking creaminess. I mean, I always, when I drink wine, it just close my eyes. It's like, what would I want to eat with this? And that's kind of how it goes. Uh, I'm not really a technical person when it comes to wine, or I'm not really, uh, I just kind of go with what tastes good. <laughs> and so that's that's the bite that, that, that you're going to have with the, with the first year. Yeah, the second one, when I had it, and I've had it more than once, um, I taste a lot of pineapple. I, I taste citrus and I t and it's just so refreshing. So hopefully the, the, the ceviche uh, that you're having, it's a little different because it does have pineapple in it, so it's gonna have a hint of uh, sweetness. And, um, but I think it goes really, really nice together. And then the third bite is uh, gazpacho, which again, you know, given the temperature that we have today, how perfect is that? And I think it also pairs really well with the, with the wine, uh, with the neviolo from Symbiosis. And um, you know, I took a gamble today. I decided I, I brought. I'm a, I'm a plan. B. When you work in television, you always have to have plan B and C because things never work out the way you think they are. So that I apply that a lot to my cooking. Uh, given that it was going to be 114 today, I'm thinking I am crazy to be baking. <laughs> <laughs> right? This it's not going to work out. But guess what? That little twist that's in the soup is um, just came out of the oven. So. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it, and I'm gonna leave and uh, enjoy the. the I'll, I'll just let the winemakers do the talking. So thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Okay, if you have any questions for her, we're gonna have her come back at the very end. Okay. Um, it looks like so for your first one, you're gonna have Jenny Jocelyn from Cereal Wines coming out to talk to you about her wine. Hi. So like you said, I'm from Cereal, or if you guys are here, um, and that first wine uh, out in front of you is our Viognier. So the Viognier comes from the Willow Creek District here in Paso. Our goal at Cereal is to really dive into exploring the Paso ABA. So we have all of our small production wines being different to the Pacific, um, and we're, when you leave, you'll probably walk right by us. Um, the Viognier is in an acacia and neutral French oak, with lots of citrus and stone fruit, a little bit floral, and I was kind of excited to hear the chef mention that green and then also just kind of mention my favorite thing about um, this, the wine is preparing in any setting. As adults, how often do we get encouraged to play with our food? I can't think of the last time where I was like, you know, if growing up, my parents don't to play with their food. In this situation, even though it's fancy and beautiful and delicious, I would highly encourage you to play with the food, have a good time with it, go back and forth between the ways they interact with each other. Is there anything that's standing out for you about either your small bite or the first wine you're enjoying? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so if you guys are, yeah. I like the fact that the between is, it's a delicate, it's a delicate texture and bite and I think this wine is very nice. They, they are in harmony with each other? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'll just tell you a little bit more about cereal wines. Um, so like I mentioned before, we are right downstairs. We're right on Park Street. Yeah, you've seen it. You've probably seen that crazy door out front. Um, and at night, if you walk by when it's dark, there is a moth and cereal wines is lit up on the ground. Our hours are kind of crazy. We do 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every single day. And then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we're there all the way till midnight. So if you are having dinner downtown, Hanging out is an awesome spot to come spend some time with us in the lounge. We do love to just, you know, have you come in and, and hang out. It's very glad to be in there. Um, like I mentioned before, we do a small production district specific wine. So all of our wines are, you know, lots of other cases. You can only find them there in the lounge. And then we do a huge variety. So several different whites, several different reds. Live music about once a month. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, who will, uh, 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 who will,
And now, a word from our sponsor. The 27 individual tasting rooms that make up the downtown wine district are situated in the heart of Paso Robles city center, where you are only steps away from all Paso Robles has to offer in the way of dining, shopping, and entertainment. Visit downtown Paso Robles to find yourself among the greatest concentration of wineries in the area. In downtown, consumers can experience Paso Robles' rich and diverse wine country lifestyle, sample quality wines from each of the region's 11 distinct sub-appellations, and have the opportunity to meet vintners that are as passionate about downtown as they are about their wine. Ready to move on to the next one? Are we majority ready to move on? All right. And then he's continuing to enjoy your bikes, but we're going to now have Donna from Symbiosis, the owner and winemaker of the One Lady Show. So she's going to tell you about her. Okay, are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, so what you have in front of you from me is a Nebbiolo. Many people think they've never had Nebbiolo before because they've had the Rolo or Barbaresco from Italy. And those are all wines made with Nebbiolo grapes. So it's a little bit obscure, but it's not as obscure as it seems. And I think it's really interesting that Alma decided to pair it with this gazpacho. So what I usually suggest with the Nebbiolo is something spicy, like a spaghetti and meatballs, like that good old knock you in the face herbal kind of spaghetti and meatballs. Or the elk they make at the range is a cherry bordelaise sauce because this wine has kind of a cherry and orange peel nose. So it's like a California wine when you smell it, but an Italian wine when you drink it because it's light body, tannic, and acidic. And there is something a little bit tomato y about the wine, which I think is why she decided to make the gazpacho. Um, so once you get to it, yeah, don't wait for me. <laughs> and also, any comments that anybody has, we should talk about it together. Well, or you can talk about it behind the back. Um, anyway, so 
This one is 2015, so that's pretty unusual to be pouring in a tasting room, but I pour this all the time in my tasting room. And it's still maybe not even quite ready yet because the window for Nebbiolo is usually 15 to 30 years. So it may taste really young to you, but I watched it grow a lot, and I feel like it is ready, especially when you add it or something like that. So what else? The grapes came from Edna Valley. A vineyard that has been gotten rid of and replaced by the new owners, the Bruceweed Company. So I don't know if it's citrus now or if this was just too obscure of a grape for them to be interested. Um, yeah, so does anybody have any comments about the food or the wine or the pairing or anything else? Mm -hmm. I mean, it does pair really well, but the wine is. 15 but still has a lot of tannin in it, right? So that's yeah, never yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um yeah. but the best pot really just kind of takes the edge off it. So she did a good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's pretty professional. <laughs> so how long do you age it before you release it? Mm -hmm. I'm very, because I'm a one person show, I'm very casual about everything. So I tend to do things when there's time or when I feel like it. So there's no program for me, like, oh, I'll get the wine. In this case, I made the wine, hated it, absolutely hated it. And I put it all together in a tank from the barrels and stuck it in the back of the winery and just did it for a couple years. And then I went back to it and I was like, oh, wow, this is really um, interesting. Mm -hmm. So I bottled it and it's been a few years since so it's been a while. I know in, in Barolo it's four years in oak by law, right? Uh, yeah. But if you have it right at that point, it's still mm -hmm. very rough. That's way too so young. Right? Really yeah. 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 This was, after four years, this was so difficult. In fact, I used to pour it in the tasting room just to watch people's face like mm -hmm. And also because a lot of people don't know what tannin is. Mm -hmm. So why? Go so here, try this. You're not going to like it, but try it. So there's an interesting movie on Netflix called The Barolo Boys. I don't know if anybody here has seen it. So there was, a, there was an old fashioned Italian wine making community that just did everything the same way for a hundred years or whatever. And one guy decided, hey, France gets a lot of money for their wines, and so I want to do what they were doing. So we went to Bordeaux and learned their winemaking techniques and brought them back. And there were these two factions. There were the old guys. And if you watch the movie, you see these like, little old Italian toothless guys, and they're arguing with each other about what's the right way. So it's a fun movie to watch. The story I heard in Barolo, there was a woman like centuries ago who came to the area basically the wine and saw the potential that really helped develop. Mm. I, I'm sorry, I forget. I don't know that story. Uh, yeah, so, and this wine is focused today. Fun thing about wine is that it's incredibly long history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Relegated to entertain. Uh, she's gonna tap. She's gonna tap dance for you. All right. So I'm just gonna talk about the downtown association a little bit and kind of introduce you to the concept of why we're doing the vibe. Uh, so there are 28 tasting rooms, I think, now in downtown. So uh, has. Anybody actually visited every single one of us? Well, you now have your vision. If you choose to accept it, there's 28. The majority of the tasting rooms will have a tasting map for you so that you can go into any of the tasting rooms and grab it, and it will have nice little dots that that Deb spends a lot of time figuring out how to put the dots in the right places and There's, there's for always us. an edit. Every time the <laughs> map goes out, there's something wrong with it. Just yeah. know it's an amateur <laughs> over making that. She does a spectacular job, and it's a, a volunteer job, which is insane. So thank you very much for all you do. Um, but the thing about downtown is, you know, well, first of all, I'm Lori from Dracina Wines. You are not tasting my wines here, but I will be down there um, for you to taste. 
the reason why I chose to do a tasting room in downtown is for these people that I get to work with on a daily basis. In many places, there's so much competition. Everybody's like, well, no, you like, you come to my winery and that's it. And with downtown, it is definitely not that way. You can come into my tasting room and on any given day, I'm more than happy to tell you, well, you know what? If you like this type of wine, this is where you should go. If you like this type of wine, this is where you should go. We all have a spreadsheet that has all of the wines that we all make. And so if you come in, somebody comes in and says, oh, you know, I want a sweet wine. None of my wines are sweet. I can tell you where to go to get sweet wine. That's kind of why downtown is downtown. The wineries work with each other. We support each other. We go to each other's events. And so you have 28-ish, Okay. Yeah. 28 uh, wineries that you can go and experience different things and each winery kind of specializes in something specific and you can go in and try each of those so I don't know if you can see I've been recording things so I write uh, a blog I have a whole other business called exploring the wine glass and that is a actually it's an award-winning blog uh, and um, I do a podcast by the same name, Exploring the Wine Glass, and that is what I'm doing the recording for. So a lot of what I do with Exploring the Wine Glass is to promote Paso. Downtown wineries, we, we have a lot of episodes on the podcast where I'm interviewing the winemakers from the other wineries, where you get to hear what they're going through and you know the good, the bad, you know, 2020, not so great, 2021, all the heat, all of that stuff, and how the winemakers approach producing wine each vintage, depending on what Mother Nature has to say. Um, so that is called Exploring the Wine Glass. You can listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts. And each of these episodes where I'm interviewing a winemaker brings you into the inside of that winery and maybe introduces you to a winery that you've never heard of, but you're like, hey, I want to try those wines. Uh, okay. Uh, I, they're serving food, so I don't think I have to talk much about it. But if you have any questions, and this is where I'm in Jersey, I'll talk to anybody on the line. Does anybody have any questions about downtown or about the events? About anything? How long do you think there have been tasting downtown? Is that a relatively new phenomenon or are they both? No. Uh, so I don't have the exact date, but I know Kianetta was one of the very first tasting rooms in downtown because she sent me, um, Caitlin sent me a tasting map that uh, has her and like one other winery on it that's not not here anymore. And so I think that she was one of them, that uh, Elena was one of the first, but also the oldest because the other ones that were here aren't here. What's that time? Uh, Deb, do you know? I'm when sorry. did Caitlin come in? When did Pianetta come into down? We've been here for a long time. Well, I have. But we've been here for a long time. And uh, it's kind of, you know, it's good and bad. Uh, it's wonderful. You get to park your car and walk around and taste Ooh. in amazing restaurants and tasting in lots of wineries. <laughs> of course, on our 114 day today, you know, it's better to taste us right here. Right. Um, but yeah, so around 17, I would say maybe 18 years ago. Anybody else have any other questions? Come on, people. How long your craft wine? Dracina Wines? So Dracina Wines started in 2013. We started with a year 75 cases of Cabernet Franc because we love Cabernet Franc. That is what our specialty is. In those 10 years, we've never seen anything less than a 90. And actually with our last vintage, we were named by Decanter Magazine as one of the top 30 wineries in Paso, uh, which I fell off the chair when I met that. Uh, you know, we are, thank you. We make 500 cases, so to be that small and to be named with some of those other guys that were in that list in Decanter Magazine was pretty impressive. Uh, 
we uh, when we went to go release our 2013 Cabernet Franc, which was 2015, I realized that there was a wine holiday for everything, and there was <laughs> not one for Cab Franc. And uh, so I am from Jersey, so we are sarcastic. <laughs> Jersey in the house, nice. Philly, <laughs> Philly all right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like flyers, but that's okay. Go Rangers! Um, I hate the devil, sorry. Um, but uh, so we realized that there was a wine holiday for everything else, but not Cap Franc. So I did start Cap Franc Day, and it is now internationally recognized yeah. wine holiday. Which brings people to Paso, so we're excited. So I believe Deb has. I'm ready for the next hour. Yeah, so Denise. December 4th. Sorry, December 4th, and I'll tell you why later. Okay. All right, so now you have Denise from Seashell Shell. So super excited to be um, talking about our low tide. It's um, Seashell's flagship. Um, what put Seashell pretty much on the map? Uh, very, very expressive cab. Uh, every year the blend switches up. So for this 22, it's going to be 88% uh, Cab Sauv and then 12% Petit Verdot. Uh, just bottled two months ago. So it's again, it's a 22. Uh, very expressive. Um, literally no heat on the finish. I am so excited about this low tide. Obviously, very drinkable right now, but it's going to keep getting better as it ages. Uh, it's a different take on a cap. Uh, it's going to uh, be a little more food forward, very, very um, food friendly. Um, it's aged uh, in new uh, French uh, oak, um, aged for about 18 months. Um, um, it's our Winery is East Side uh, Paso, the Estrella ABA. So we get that nice coastal breeze in the morning. Um, the fog rolls in. Four o'clock typically, if you're not from Paso, hottest part of the day here in Paso. But the cool thing is, eight o'clock at night, we can plummet down 30 degrees. So that coastal breeze uh, comes in, really makes those vines uh, flourish. Unlike us humans, guess what? Vines love stress. So they're getting that stress at four o'clock in the afternoon, but morning, uh, early evening, they get, they get to release. So uh, Seashell, we're on 13th Street, right across the street from Della's and the Hatch. 100% uh, family owned and operated. I am not part of the family, but I kind of, adopted myself into it, have had the privilege of working with them for a little over five years now. Uh, all, uh, again, estate fruit. Uh, they do about 2,200 case production uh, per year. So you're not going to see seashell uh, like many of the others here today in grocery stores, um, but we do have some local presence in the local restaurants and hotels here. Uh, owners are from Colorado. So any Colorado people, Woo! any family, yes? All right, so you'll see uh, in quite a few of the restaurants in Colorado, you're gonna see that uh, seashell label over there. So, any questions? Denise wants to run off the stage, so somebody ask me. No, ask me questions. <laughs> How much? Thank you. How much? It's really good. And it's terrible. How much is that? Yeah. So forty-two. Today we are offering a discount, uh, ten percent off. Uh, we will be down here, of course. Uh, main event today. Uh, we are going to be pouring our rosé. It's a Provence style rosé. Um, really soft, easy. I call it the Porsche Pounder. The twenty-two um, or the twenty-three? Oh. The twenty-two. <laughs> yeah. And then we are actually pouring our uh, Sir Balboa, which is a new blend. It's a Tempranillo Syrah blend. You don't find that that often. Um, and then a new release that actually has not even come out yet, um, our 2020 Syrah. Have a few club members here and they've tasted it. Um, and then we have our Estate Cuvée, which is a Syrah tablet. 
Anybody else? Any questions? All right. Well, enjoy, everybody. And now, a word from our sponsor. Exploring the Wine Glass is brought to you by Dracina Wines. Dracina Wines is an artisan winery located in Paso Robles, California. They have been producing wine since 2013. Their first vintage began with one wine, their classic Cabernet Franc, which received a 91 in Wine Enthusiast. Since then, they have increased production as well as expanded their portfolio, have received many accolades, including multiple double gold medals and consistent 90-plus ratings. Visit their website, www.dracinawines.com, or use the link in the show notes to schedule a private tasting and to see their entire portfolio. Purchase your award-winning wine and let Dracina Wines help turn your moments into great memories. My name is Brandon, I'm from the Kitchen Community Cellars. It's uh, uh, right, actually right outside the window in the alley right here. Um, now we can start, but there's a reason why they make people last. So, this is what anyway, um, what we have is uh, the taco is um, blue corn, which is like, goes great with fruit. So we have uh, Australia corn syrup. This is uh, from the Australia River Corn, it was created in Paso. It's um, a corn syrup that is preconceived with high tobacco and charcoal notes to make us competitive for colder climate areas. So we have a syrup that tastes like Santa Barbara syrup, or places in that area, because syrup is the type of wine that would do better in its third trimester, so you want to get the quality and the characters that you would want in September, October, November. And a lot of times with this heat, we're not getting in that area the heat clusters hanging on the vine. So this is the Australia Cologne. It was created here by some guys from Paso Robles. And we're proud of the Australia River and the Australia Winery originated in Paso Robles. Uh, this wine goes great with this dish because we paired it opposite. This is more like a blue corn to go with the fruit of Salah. It's more like an opposite. The, the, Pesco DJ is more like a, a, a vinegar note, and that would go opposite with more of the satiny finish or the satiny head palette of Syrah. The, um, I gotta take my notes because I'm great at wine, but I didn't. The red onion also has bright acid, and that's great with the satin mid palette. And then the, you know, so the avocado boost is the highest pH part. And that's where the bright acid comes at and, and the start of the mid time. So this wine went great with this dish. I tasted it myself. Uh, I will stand behind it. Um, I am a representative of the Downtown Paso Association. Woo! These guys are making amazing wine. And we're at one time in Paso Robles, there will be a couple of wineries. And I'm not trying to short anybody, but it was more like a novelty. These guys are artists. Every one of them. Um, there's guys out here that have been in the business 25 years. They make an amazing wine. They're artists. They live the passion. They've been around forever and they're part of the essence of Paso Robles. Downtown is where it needs to be. So, again, Indigenous Cellars is uh, right in the alley, right outside, right here. Uh, we make a couple of wines. I started out as a wine bottler. So I'm kind of the most backward person in the wine <laughs> business, the most schizophrenic menu of wines. We do some of everything there. I literally learned something about wine from probably 500 guys in the wine business all over California in the time that I bottled wine. But um, I made a Paso a home. Um, this is where I'm from. I love this business. I love this art. I consider myself an artist and I'm learning every day uh, this is going to get better every year and it's going to be more exciting all the time. I've never been in a place where there's so many high functioning artists. We get a lot of people at a high level. Um, I 
I think calm for calm, the best tasting experience that you guys can get. And you walking around can be downtown. I don't know of a wine down here that doesn't hold up to Napa Valley, Paso Robles, Oscars, uh, San Lucia Highlands, Santa Maria Valley, everywhere you can go. These guys kill it. I love to be a part of it. And again, we'll go circle back to there's a reason why they have me last. <laughs> so, anyway, cheers, you guys. I hope this is great. Cheers. Any questions you guys have? I'm in. Any questions? I want to be done with the wine for six years. For six years? This is an 18. So. This 18, yeah. So, like I said, the Square clone is a wine that the clone is conceived with bigger tobacco notes, bigger charcoal notes. Model. It stays and I do everything in, in, in French oak. Nadalier, which is more like a Pinot style barrel, mm -hmm. but the Pinot program that they use, we did it with Syrah because we wanted to have more fleshy, like like Burgundian style notes, but a big brighter, higher acid, and a mid palette that would be at the same level. That way it stays present, and then a big finish that would have satin. But the tannins that would hold up to a wine. So, so. one year, two years ago. Uh, it's my three years ago, and it's been in bottles since mm -hmm. 2021. So three years. Now nah, we're not big new old wines. <laughs> you'll see in the wines that you taste out here. We're more in the neutral window. Um, I've always been the type of guy that we want to show the essence of the grapes that grow here. And this is West Side Fruit, which is a premium around California, I think. And we're selling wine here. We're not selling it. So uh, I'm not against old barrels, but I want to be able to show what they have to sell, uh, what they have to exhibit here at Paso Robles, not what they have at barrel programs. Very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Any other questions for Ray? Before? So I'm going to bring Emma back out so you guys can talk to her. Or if, she, if you want, she can come to your table, or just, you know, if you have any questions for her. So, I'm going to come back down, please. Thank you. Right. Thank you. First of all, I think you need I don't really have much more to say. I know. <laughs> if you have questions for her, we told you she was going to be out of hand. So, yes. so, I don't know if you're old from Paso or from from somewhere else. I do live in Paso. I'm a private chef. If you ever have a special occasion, something, you know, to celebrate and you want a private dinner. Oh, <laughs> I, I love cooking and I love working with uh, winemakers. So food and wine, like I said, it's always it's always a good thing. Very much. Yeah. Every single any any major disagreements on the pairing. No. <laughs> no. no. Well, you. No. Okay, good, good, good. Because you know, sometimes you taste a wine today and you may have an idea and you taste it tomorrow or even a month later and it's a completely different story. So it, it changes, yes. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys all made it today. I enjoy the rest of your day and thank you again for allowing me to. This has been another episode of Exploring the Wine Glass. Thanks for listening. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like me to discuss, please reach out on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Exploring the Wine Glass. I am also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoyt Budd. Of course, you can always email me at exploringthewineglass at gmail.com and sign up for my newsletter at exploringthewineglass.com. If you enjoyed what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to help others find me more easily. And most importantly, tell your wine-loving friends, because if you like the podcast, they will too. Podcast music is Wine by Kevins. Until next week, slancha. Right now. Right now. I'm on Kevins for like 10,000, tell you There is always time. Nah.